Hey guys, I wanted to share with you uh, in the first message in 2024 is really the simplest way I know uh, to guarantee you love, peace, vibrant health, abundance, success, all the things that we know are that are natural to us. And if we don't have them, it's uncomfortable because it's against our true nature of total freedom. And uh, the the way to guarantee all of that is unconditional love. And I'm going to share a little healing of the book as we go through this, um, go through some of the mistranslated scriptures a little bit. But more importantly, just like I said, the easiest way I've found to for you to experience all those things by applying unconditional love. And uh, I'm going to share some of the testimonies again, just because there, there's so much truth in these things. And uh, um, unconditional love, as I've been talking to Barb and uh, some friends this week, is so foreign to religious love, to Western theology love. Unconditional love, by definition, is no conditions. <laughs> and and the, I'm sharing that. And it's the the best way to describe it is saying yes to things. I accept these things. I like as Rhonda Burns shares in The Greatest Secret. Um, she couldn't overcome her desperation uh, and her, her depression with positive thoughts by over trying to overcome it. So what did she do? She goes, I wrap my arms around that depression, the feeling inside her, like I'm welcoming a loved one. I'm like, I'm welcoming one of my best friends. You're just welcome here. I love you. And you just sit with it. You allow that, that negative feeling, that negative situation. You love it. Yeah, I welcome you. What most people are doing is going, I don't like this. And uh, a lot of it's not your fault. You've been taught mistranslations that religious love um, says no to a lot of things. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like the, this diagnosis. I don't like these this other religion. I don't like this other political party. Um I don't like the government. I don't like lots of things. It sounds like a typical Sunday morning church service, <laughs> which is religious love, which is not unconditional love. That's why it's so foreign. So I'm going to do my best to, to share this with you because what's really cool when you love all the uncomfortable situations, when you welcome them and truly love them, when you welcome uh, somebody that's opposing you, just, you know what, I'm going to allow whatever feeling comes up when I think about that person when I think about that diagnosis, when I think about, and I'm just going to allow myself to love that fear, love that desperation, and just say yes to it, that out of control feeling. I'm just going to love you. I'm going to become aware that I'm feeling it, and I'm going to love that feeling. I promise you guys, the feeling dissolves, and everything that was attached to that feeling, all the thoughts, all the uh, um, in things probably you've struggled with your whole life, it takes all those thoughts and all those wrong beliefs that have just layered upon layered, the true nature of you, which is infinite, which is creative, which is complete freedom. In fact, your heart and minds, guys, are, are divine gifts um, to heal you, prosper you, supply you with everything you could ever need, no matter what situation you find yourself in. They're gifts. That's who you are. You are designed divine. And uh, when you let go and love all those negative thoughts, anything, any feeling, situation, thought, when you love it, welcome it, say yes to it. Instead of, no, I don't like this because God doesn't like this. Um, they're not there. I promise you, they're not there. And uh, uh, what's so great is when you practice love. I'm just going to read this to you, which is where the title came from, from Lawrence Crane's Love Yourself. Uh, it says, fuel your day with love. And, uh, you know, that's where, like I've shared with you, um, you know, the, the neuroscientists, et cetera, the ones who really get it, don't watch the news. But most people watch the news and they find a bunch of things that you're supposed to say no to. <laughs> I'm supposed to say no to this, this bad situation, these bad people, et cetera. Where the most powerful force that actually changes it and brings that person as well as you into harmony is love. When you say, I don't like this, I oppose this because God says no to this, you add energy to it because you're divinely creative and you actually create more of it. So we remember that love is being loving, meaning it's accepting unconditional love. Like I said, by definition is unconditional. There's no conditions. And uh, people go, we're well, not actually supposed to love these negative things. You're not actually supposed to love this negative thing, this person that's doing this to me. Well, that's a conditional love then. That's the religious love that you've been taught. And I'll share with you, I'll show you a couple examples where just it's mistranslations of the no's and nots. God can't be no. <laughs> Just feel the energy of no versus yes, I love that and welcome it. 
One is peace. One is ease. One is the flow of God. One is, ooh, I don't like this fight, conquer, resist, all the strange things that we were taught that the scriptures clearly say. Anytime you hear somebody say the Bible clearly says, run away. Because uh, it doesn't clearly say anything in English. In fact, it clearly says the exact opposite in English. And I, I don't say that happily. It's just the truth, guys, as I'll show you just a couple examples. So anyway, feel your day with love, the most powerful force in the universe. Remember that when you say yes and love everything is the same as, uh, remember that love and being loving is the exact same energy, guys, as being positive. See, religious love says no, 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 no. Lots of buts. God is love, but, and we do clever little things like God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. No, there's nothing in there. There's not, that is not there. That's a, that's a convenient, clever little slogan for, uh, for, for Christians basically to allow yourself to be judgmental of others and other things, because it clearly says in the Bible is God is judgmental. It doesn't say that love is accepting of all things. <laughs> so it's the same energy as being happy, being successful and being abundant. <clears throat> have the intention to be, this is page 131, guys, in, in the Love Yourself by Lawrence Crane. Have the intention to be loving whatever comes your way. This is holding in mind love. What you hold in mind is what you experience all the time. Your intention to be loving and holding mind guarantees you positive. Why? Because because yes is positive, no is negative. It's almost so simple that we miss it. It guarantees you success, that'd be good. It guarantees you abundance, that'd be good. It guarantees you vibrant health. It guarantees you peaceful stress stress-free living, it's guaranteed because that's what you're holding in your mind. So it really becomes this simple, guys, is allow any negative situation, any feeling, become aware of the feelings behind every thought, every this, how do you feel about this situation? How do you feel about this diagnosis? How do you feel about your body? Um, how do you feel about your husband, your wife, your kids, your spouse? Allow any negative, and if it's not perfect, guys, is, is if you're not flowing freely in love, abundance, and vibrant health, I promise you, you've been saying no to something. You've been using religious love. I don't like this because God doesn't like this. I'm going to fight this. Pick anything in there. Devil, Satan, uh, demons, the government. There's no fight in God. God <laughs> there's no fight, I promise you. It's just flow. Is Become aware of anything and the feelings behind those thoughts. They'll be negative. They'll be, I don't like this. I'm desperate. I'm anxious. I feel out of control. I just love this. I'm going to welcome it and love it. Just be present with it. It'll dissolve, guys, because it's touching your true nature, which is infinite love. And then everything that it says love is the same energy of abundance, success, etc. When you change from within, your external world changes. That's that's the greatest, probably the greatest discovery of science of of uh, of modern science is like holy smokes when your heart and your your mind are positive you you have a total change whether it's healing of autism which i'm going to show you again healing the reason i love all these testimonies that come into freedom and uh and all the joe dispenza testimonies because we're basically doing the same thing we're loving any negative thing is the easiest way to get bad get rid of all the wrong beliefs thoughts things that are holding your life back and just allowing yourself to love and accept anything you could want in life. It comes with ease. Your heart and mind actually is a flow out of you. And any change internally, the inner man, the younger brother in scripture, it talks about versus the older brother. The older brother is just this flesh. The younger part is the spiritual, the, the second birth, the spiritual birth uh, within all humanity, the, 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 the birth of God, actually, the, the, the life that comes from the semen or seed of God which is unstoppable. And uh, it's really cool. So when you change within, you let go of all the negative and become more and more positive, then you there's nothing opposing you. So you can just go, I can allow myself to have the greatest year I've ever had. It comes to me freely and easily. And I'll, I'll talk about more of that at the end. So let me just show you this. Uh, let me show you this testimony again, because I think it's very powerful. And then I'll do a little healing of the book. And in the end, um, I'll walk you through how to uh, do the big three. I call it your your relationships. How do you, do you love yourself? And do you have a loving relationship with others? Um, your your health. How do you feel about your health, your vibrant health? And just abundance, freedom, uh, more than enough for yourself and enough to give out of yourself uh, to others. That's that's freedom when, when it flows to you in effortless abundance. So let me just show you this part again. Um, 
And I'd encourage you to watch the whole video. I'm just going to show you the front and the back to get the key points. But if you go watch some of these, uh, Joe Dispenza has been posting these unlimited videos, it, whether it's Crohn's disease or or finances. Um, like I said, your, your true design, your true nature is God supplied you, already supplied you with everything you could ever need to prosper you, to heal you, to supply you with everything you could ever need from within. No matter what situation you find yourself, it's infinite power because it's God. Who can oppose God? Nothing, nothing or no one. It is the infinite power. We can, by practicing religious love, which says no to a lot of things, God doesn't like this. Like I said, it's not your fault. That's what you were taught. It just doesn't work. And uh, uh, the reason people are coming to to uh, to freedom, to the Joe Dispenza, because we get results, guys. It's, it works. That's what we're after. I'm not really interested in the theology that doesn't work. So anyway, watch this. This is cool. And so as I got better, he got better. And as he got better, I got better. And things escalated. And I am so happy to say now that my little boy that could not leave our home, could not leave our home, is out in the world. Okay, so if you watch the whole thing, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna skip to the end because I think this is so good. Um, uh, she, her son, her her son, uh, severe autism, like slept an hour a night for years. Um, couldn't leave her side because of fear, anxiety, stress, which uh, caused all kinds of emotional challenges, physical challenges in, in her. So she was becoming unhealthy. Her relationships were being affected. And basically what, what he taught, if you listen to this, is how to let go of fear and de desperation. How do you do that? It's very difficult to try to overcome it with only positive thoughts. Some people are disciplined enough, but it's much easier to love and welcome Recognize the feeling behind the fear. Recognize the feeling about desperation. She recognized, how do I really feel about my son? And it would be anxiousness, fear. Oh my God, he's got autism. All those uncomfortable thoughts and emotions. So she welcomed those. I love those feelings. She sat with it. It's okay for me to feel this a minute. I'm not going to try to push you away feeling I'm going to love you. I welcome you. And I, as Ron the Burns says, maybe in the beginning you want to just go mentally or, or even physically act it out. I'm going to put my arms around this desperation and just love it. It's okay. I'm going to put my arms around this body. Body, you're amazing. You serve me. Uh, you do whatever you want to do. I'm just going to love you and accept you however you are, body. I'm telling you, when you when you go, body, you, you want to have this condition? I, it's okay. I love you. I accept you as it is. Diagnosis, I love you. I accept you. Right, do what you want to do. I love you and accept you. I'm not going to try to change you. I'm accept unconditional love is I love you and accept you exactly the way you are. I love this negative situation exactly what it is. I'm going to allow myself to feel whatever I feel behind that situation and love it. That feeling of lack. I'm going to love this. I'm going to welcome it. Guys, I'm telling you, it touches infinite love and it dissolves out of you and takes with you thousands and thousands of wrong beliefs. You get closer and closer to the true nature, which is unlimited, which is pure love, which is pure joy which is peace. And you just stay present. You stay very calm. You stay patient. Everything's okay because I'm in love. And all the things you used to be struggling for, the health, the vibrant health, the, the health, the love, um, the abundance naturally flows out of love and just starts to happen in your life with ease. You become less and less negative as you love those negative feelings and you become more and more positive. And as you become more and more positive, which is unconditional love, everything's okay. I, I love and accept every condition, everything. Everything good starts to happen. The things you used to struggle for it start to become easy. So listen to listen to his commentary about basically what happened. I'm just walking you through the easiest way I know to experience, to let go of fear and desperation is to love those feelings. And what's left is the infinite power and love of God, which is natural. It'll come up all by itself. But you can also add to it. If you listen to Larry Crane and, or some of the meditations, uh, if you listen to Dispenza's, you know, blessing to the energy center, you can just go, I love you. You're the, you are the perfectly loved apple of God's eye. You're amazing in every way. You are God's divine perfection. If you hear a lot of them, he teaches them to go, hello, geniuses, because geniuses, when you let go of, I don't know, and all the un un uncomfortable feelings, I don't know something, the spirit in you knows everything, does it not? It's either the spirit of God or not. You become, you're, you come intuition, you start to experience 
life out of the flow of the heart versus trying to figure it out with your head, which only causes stress. And you go into all knowing because the spirit in you knows everything. So this is really cool. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't take anything. We just did this. We connected to love and it healed everything. She changed along the way and started feeling less lack, less desperation, more love, more wholeness. The heart is the creative center and it's going to cause the brain to dream of a new possibility. It's the way it is. As she moved closer to pure love, she moves closer to source greater frequency, greater consciousness, it can begin to nurture and heal all kinds of things in the morphogenic field, in the field around all living things. The greatest part of the story is that the moment you leaned down and you saw your young son smiling at you with all the people at your house, that was the vision that you had of your future. You seeing him smiling from that image, you said, what is, how do I wanna see him? And you had that moment where you actually looked at him and you got, that, you got that smile in his face. You were in that future. That's how powerful we are when we make up our mind to create. That is so rich, guys. So rich. Basically, love the feelings. You get rid of all the love, the desperation, the anxiety, the feelings that I don't control. What am I going to do in this situation? Allow those feelings to come up. Love them. The more you love those feelings, they dissolve. You get more and more positive. It's natural to you. It's the infinite presence of God. And then you can allow yourself to have a new vision for your life. Like he said, is I allow myself to have unlimited abundance with ease. And I'll, I'll walk you through it again at the end. But that's really it, is you let go of the negatives and you start to see what you do desire in your life. Um, and it happens to you effortlessly. That's your divine design. So let me just do a little healing of the book real quick. Um, like I said, is uh, uh, we think religious love says a lot of no's, and I'm just going to show you over and over. It's it's conditional. So if you take uh, uh, Hebrews 11:6 for instance, the great thing of faith. Um, just take verse six, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, that's a bummer. And like I I, I sent in the the email and um, Facebook post, it's not true. <laughs> I, as a parent, you guys as parents, you guys as grandparents, we have enough common sense that if our kids are, are don't have confidence right now, um, we only love them if they're totally confident. You can only please me, children, if you're totally confident and have faith. Uh, that would be a great, great time to apply unconditional love. So, of course, as I've told you, if you read anything, uh, because of all the mistranslations of no's and nots, um, impossible, unholy, they're all mistranslations, 100, 100, 100%, guys. I'll show you the alpha again. Um, that, the common sense should go, that's not love. That's conditional love. That's religious love. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let's go into the inner linear and show what he actually says, okay? It's actually a divine promise. So if you look at this, is here's chorus, where we get grace, charis, charin. So here's, if you go look at this, uh, this comes from the Hebrew semek, which is the propping up of a plant, like the support and propping up of a plant of a, the last covenant, Omega of Rish. It's a, it's a, it's a combination of a, the, the highest point of the head. So here you've got race, the head, the iota, the deed done, the double entendre, the seed has been released of the consummation of the covenant, shin, the fire. And you shall behold what comes out of this entrustment Faith is not something you must do. It is an entrustment, guys. And it is the, the dynamite power and pleasure of God. It is a promise that everyone will experience the, the, the entrustment, which is all these faith verses, guys. If you go look them up, um, it's not God will only, uh, it's impossible to please him because this is a dynaton, a complete mistranslation. Unable, unpowerful, dunatos is power, dynamite power, alpha as a negative prefix except it's never used as a negative prefix, as I've been trying to show people over and over and over and over and over and over. God can't be negative. So examples of mu, of me, ow, and I've shown you like what these actually say. Um, but if you go to alpha uh, and you go, you come to the bottom, it'll say the Hebrew origin, the first letter of the alphabet, figuratively, alpha, uh, um, often used as a privation, uh, no, not, <clears throat> occasionally in the sense of union. Well, of course, it's always the sense of union because the strength of God of the seed that's released in intimacy. So let me go prove it to you. So this alpha, which is translated no or not in your scriptures, is from the Hebrew alpha. 
Now, let's just start with Greek, okay? Greek, if you go to the modern Greek alphabet and just go look up the first letters, alpha, is the first letter of the Greek alphabet in the system of Greek numerals. It is a value of one. It's also a value of a thousand. Alpha is derived from a Phoenician letter, aleph, the hieroglyphic, the picture of an ox, which is the West Semitic word for ox. Okay. So Greek says it's from um, Hebrew, and it's originally meant a picture of an ox. Great. So let's go to the Hebrew, okay? And I'll show you a couple things. I've shown you this over and over. So you can just type up uh, pictographs of the Hebrew language, and you'll find all, this is just one example, um, Aleph, number one, the ox, the bull, the, the strength of the leader, Adonai, a thousand, the number for a one and a thousand. So this is the strength of the ox. So in Greek, it's an ox. In Hebrew, it means the strength of the ox. Uh, never means no or not. And let's just go, I've shown you, I just used a couple sources just to show you. There's a zillion sources, guys. Um, is uh, If you go to the Hebrew for Christians, <clears throat> um, like I said, I, I wouldn't take their theology, but they, they do get a lot of the letters right. So if you go to Aleph, uh, here's what's really interesting, guys. The advanced information, hello, hello, it's the father. It's the, the father is the progenitor. It's where the seed comes out. The letter Aleph is the father of the Aleph bet, whose original pictograph, see the, the Greek and the Hebrew guys were not spoken languages. They were picture-based. They, they were story. They were allegory. The original pictograph represents an ox. It means the strength. It means the leader. So an ox, the strength of the leaders, does it ever mean no? No. Well, why did the Latins translate it as no? <laughs> they completely missed it, which is why I've shown you from Genesis 1, where it says a left off 11,050 times, it says untranslatable. We don't know what this is. The writers knew exactly what it was. It was the strength of God, the, of the ox, the strength of the leader, the strength of the the seed is in the covenant. Tough. The mark of the covenant. <laughs> when two join together and the seed is released in pleasure and intimacy, what happens? Life happens. It's the ish and the isha. You shall, the male is the seed, it releases the seed. Isha, the woman, is they put a hay on it. It's the creative ability of God. Like, hey, it's a little picture of hay. You shall behold or see what comes from that. So as the male and female come together, seed of the ox is released, the trumpet shouts. And there's there's a zillion metaphors for that, guys, as I've been sharing with you. It's the branch, it's the stick, it's the rod, even the word cross, where we get crucifixion. If you go look it up, it says storus. It says an upright stake, comma, hence a Roman cross. Well, there's no Hanson Roman cross to the original writers. They were talking about the strength of the covenant, about intimacy is what they were talking about. So anyway, I'm just showing you over and over, but it uses the pen, the grapho. Think about the, the sword, um, the stake, the thorn in his side. Uh, trying to think of all the, the, the rod of the shepherd, the stick, the branch, the vine, the candlestick. They're all pointy objects, guys. Uh, about the erection or the intimacy, the firmness, and the, the strength of God that's released from that firmness. I guarantee you, promise you, promise you, promise you, it never means no or not. I'm just going to show you one more. So it, it doesn't say, uh, it is by faith, it's only impossible to please him. It says, there's an entrustment, pistios. You've been given this gift, this trust that you can't screw up. And it is the pleasure or the, the final completion of the covenant of God that everyone will experience. It's beautiful, actually. Uh, let me just show you one more where, where they're talking about sin, et cetera. Now, this one, I'm just going to show you like, like uh, kind of we were talking about uh, as about grace. And they use this. This is one of their, their key verses. <clears throat> for, for sin shall not be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. Sounds great. But there's no law. There's no no's and knots into the scripture. Now, this is one. Grace guys, it'd be interesting if they could actually see what's in their in their book. Sin is Ameros. Let me just go to the interlinear. Like I said, I'm just giving you some of the healing of your book. And on the end, if you if you just listen to the, the beginning and the end, go, I don't care about any of this, fine. It works perfectly. <laughs> I'm just telling you the guys who, uh, who continue to read this and don't understand one lick of it when they read it in English, okay? So sin is a martia. The alpha, there's no, no, or not. I'm just, I'm not going to go through that again, but it says a, 
It's the strength of the ox. It's the strength of the ox. It never means no or not in Greek. It says it's a picture of an ox. It never means no or not in Hebrew. It's a picture of an ox. In Hebrew for Christians, it never means no or not. It's a picture of the strength of the ox. So the strength of God, the strength of the leader, comes from meros. And if you just look at this, it's the mem, the mighty waters, or the strength of the the unstoppable strength of the waves of water, like waves hitting. There's just the power and the might and the strength of the waters. <clears throat> and then of Resh and Tia, the, the Yod, the, the, the finished work of the Ox of the Covenant, is your inheritance. Translated as sin. About as far away from what it actually says in Greek and Hebrew as you can ever imagine. So it says this strength of God that you shall experience from the head, the race, the highest point of man, gar, gar. If you go look up Gamal, it says anything like a camel rising up from the earth, that is the strength of God of the highest point of man, race, of Hymen. Now, that's an interesting thing, guys, Hamon. Um, ladies, this is a very sexual, intimate part, very similar. And this is literally the seed of the life that comes from the last covenant of the mighty waters of the stick. No, we're not. Omicron Upsilon. It, maybe I'll just show you this real quick. For, there's always new people turning into this. Um, translated, no, we're not. I promise you guys, there's no, no, we're not, or uns, or unholy, or anywhere in scripture. It means low, like where we get low and behold, like, hey, you shall experience the creative ability of the strength of the ox that comes from the lamed, the stick. And ayin, you shall experience the seed, the swimmer, the finished work. If you go look up 10 anywhere in scripture, the yod, it's the 10th letter. Iota in, in Greek, Yod in Hebrew, it means the deed has been done. The sex act has been completed. And you're going to see this, the life that comes from the strength of the ox, of the seed that's released. This this noon, um, let me just show you this one, one more time, uh, bookmarks. Um, let's see. I think uh, I'll just show you one example again. Yeah, so here's here's... A laugh, the strength of the ox doesn't look like no or not to me ever anywhere in scripture. Um, but uh, a laugh, strength of the ox, the noon, the end, the new in Greek, the, the noon in Hebrew, seed, fish, life continues. It's the swimmer, it's the seed that's released. That's what's going on here, guys. So there's it's not no or not. It says, You shall behold the strength of the ox that comes out of the rod, or the life that comes from the, the deed done of this of the strength of the ox the seed that's released, the life that comes from it, okay? So it says, you shall experience the life that comes from being under this. This is intimacy, guys. And you shall experience the strength of the ox of the rising up, like a camel rises up from the earth of the strength of God of the head, that you are under law. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this, guys. You were taught us the first five books of Moses. Ask yourself, how did Moses... If, this, if Moses is a guy, how did he write about himself after he died? Every Bible student I, go, I, I share that with, they go, I've always wondered that too. Interesting. So nomos, to parcel out. It's something that's cast out, guys, to parcel out. Hello, we're starting to get somewhere. But I want to show you uh, <clears throat> Torah. This is this, the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. This word is used for Torah. Now, we're taught, first five books of Moses, it's the Old Covenant, the law. But you're not under that Old Covenant anymore. God changed. The changeless God changed, and he gave you a new covenant. Well, if he's the same yesterday to ever and changeless, then he changed. No, nothing changed, guys. It's it's talking about the same two stories the whole time, I promise you, which actually gives you more freedom and, and belief. Like, okay, God is God is perfect. We can trust this God because he's not changing. All right? Torah. So Toph, Vav, Resh, you shall behold what comes from. So this is Torah. Let me just show you this. Torah. So I just, I, I went ahead and I looked up Torah. Torah. Direct, direction, instruction, law. Remember, it's something that's parceled out or cast out. From Yara, which is something shouted out, cast out. Um, and I said, sometimes it's used for union. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, kind of instruction. <laughs> Sorry, I, I laugh when I when I read these translations because I know what it actually is. And so anyway, uh, the messianic instruction of the age. Guys, oh my gosh. I try to see all these messianic teachers, whatever. And like, it's so simple. It's the manner of man and God. <clears throat> 
Strong's exhaustive concordance, if you want to know what it really means, it means something that's cast out of the bull or the ox. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so reading that correctly, here's what it says. It says, the strength of God is your portion of the rising up that you shall experience within yourself. This is the this is what you will be under. And you shall experience this, <clears throat> uh, this completion of the rod of God and the rising up that exists under the ox of Allah, which is under the life that comes from grace. It'll be freely given to everybody, guys. Do you get it? All right. So I just did a couple of healing the books, wanted you to get it. So let's talk about this. How do you make 2024 the greatest, um, the greatest uh, year of your life? Where everything, vibrant health, peace, abundance, what used to be a struggle becomes easier and easier and just flows out of you. Here's what I'd recommend. You could do the big three. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Almost everybody I've talked to, um, because they're so accustomed to religious love that has lots of no's, they can't fathom that I love and accept every negative feeling, every, every negative situation. They'll go, we're well, not saying actually love that too, right? Because of those things like, well, God loves the sinner and hates the sin. No, God is love. He loves everything. He's acceptance of everything exactly how it is. That's love. That's unconditional. By definition, unconditioned means no condition. Religious love has all conditions. He's love, but. And if you get rid of those big hairy butts of yourself that are getting those out of the way, I'm going to give you the easiest way to do it. So you could do the big three. It's your relationships. Do you love yourself? And do you have loving relationships with others? Um, how's your health? How's your abundance? So you could say, I allow myself to have bliss and love in all my relationships with these. I allow myself to have peace and vibrant health with ease. I allow myself to enjoy overflowing abundance with ease. Now, if if you're not already flowing in all those areas, something, ooh, that's not true about me. Just be aware of any feeling that comes up in you that says, it's not real right now. You can't have it. You don't deserve it. You're guilty. God will only bless you if you're a steward. God will only bless you if you stop sinning. All those are no's or nots. They're negatives. Here's what you do. Become aware of those feelings. Instead of going, I don't like this, trying to pray right away to overcome them, welcome those feelings. Love those feelings. It's okay for that feeling to be here. Like Rhonda Burns says, if you kind of just wrap your arms around and just love that feeling, I'm going to love that feeling and stay present. Negative feeling, negative emotion, negative situation, I love you. And I'm going to welcome you here. And just be aware of how it feels. Just, I love you. Everything's okay. I just accept you exactly how you are. Body, I'm not going to try to heal you. I'm going to accept you exactly how you are. Situation, I'm not going to try to fix you. I'm going to accept you exactly how you are in love. That's unconditional love, guys. It's foreign. I promise you, all of a sudden, all the, the negative um, constriction, the resistance, the negative feelings dissolve, and you get more and more positive. You get closer and closer to who you really are. The infinite love, the, un the unlimited ability of God within you unconditional love, the infinite ability of God, the presence of God within you gets closer and closer and becomes easier and easier. You get freer and freer. You start flowing more and more and more. Basically, you get rid of the, the, the negative by loving, and you can apply yourself some more love. If you listen to a lot of the things, could you just love yourself? Just say, yes, I love you. I love myself. I'm the infinite presence of God. I've always been loved. I've always been one with God. I'm the I'm the, the genius, the great of creation, the creator, the most loving being on the planet. I'm God's best. I'm his highest creation. I'm in pure love and infinite ability. That's what I am. That's what I have. And you just do that. You say it quietly to yourself. I would recommend you write them down, guys, in a journal or a book. And just when you wake up in the morning, just I allow myself to have peace and vibrant health with ease. I allow myself to have overjoy and abundance for myself, my family, so I have more than enough for myself and to give to others. That's the flow. That's abundance, guys. That's You can give out of your, your abundance. Just check, see if there's any negative that says, like, feeling that says I can't have it, and love that feeling. That's where people trip it up. They try to rebuke it. They pray. They go, please, God. They they operate in desperation. Remember what, what Dispenza said. when you That testimony, she allowed the fear and desperation to leave because she took her mind all off it, 
the fastest and the easiest way I've found guys is to love it and, and just be present with it. Welcome it. Say yes to it. You know what? Negative situation. You're coming up because you want me, you want to leave. I want to be free from this for the first time in my life. I understand this. And instead of doing what I've always done, which is rebuke it, fight it, try get rid of it, try heal, try fix it, try create abundance. I'm just going to love the situation as it is. I welcome the feeling behind it. I love it. It's okay for it to be here. I love it. It'll dissolve. And then you get closer and closer. It says you get closer and closer to love. You get closer and closer to your infinite self. When you love all those negative feelings, all that's left is the pure 100% pureness of God. And you can just allow it to happen because you're completely positive with no layers saying you can't have it. You're not good enough. You're, you're guilty. You're a sinner. No, all those are gone. I'm the infinite presence and love of God where everything is possible. I just allow the greatest year I've ever had to fall into my life with ease. That's the strength and the flow of God. This is how it is. Hopefully that helps, guys. God bless you.